Um, and we are continuing off of yesterday. So yesterday we looked at the two major branches of reproduction. What were the two major um, sexual and asexual? Right, so today we're going to focus mostly on sexual reproduction. Um, since we are talking about reproductive behaviors, asexual reproducers, since they don't have partners, they don't have a lot of the um, work in advance that a sexual reproducer would. Um, so once again, it is uh, February 2nd. Um, and today we are going to look at courtship in um, animals. All right, and well, first I want to think about courtship and ways to impress a mate. Um, a lot of organisms do that by showing off, um, right? So there are animals that have bright colors or animals that engage in competitions to impress mates. Um, how can showing off help or hurt you? Like what are, what are some benefits or costs to that? So let's say I'm a really brightly colored male bird, right? For example, blue jays. The female blue jay is a brown bird, but the male blue jay is blue, blue right? Um, right, this bright blue coloration is attractive to females, right? It might get him more mates. But what would be a disadvantage of being blue? He can't. Please, Mage. as well, right? So there's a cost. There, there is, um, being brightly colored, while it might attract mates, it also means you might be someone's dinner. Yes? Um, there are none left. First come for syrup, sit there. Um, all right, so what about showing up? What about doing something like loud or risky or dangerous, right? Like, um, right, and competition as well. Right? So you compete, you compete with another male, and you might what? You could die, like you could potentially be injured and die, or at the very least humiliated. But what's the benefit? Like if you win, you get to mate, right? So today we're kind of looking at this in reference to animals and their strategies for getting mates. Um, so let's find someone to be a Survival fitness, yeah, right? You're trying to prove that you are the fit, the fittest, right? You are the one who was most fit to survive. All right, let's see, he's not here. Um, but Shakira is, could you read our quote, please? Who you got with the answer? Uh, I'm taking it out. Um, there is no art of fi to finding a lover, but there is to finding someone that loves you. Mm. Hmm. All right, who can say more? What are they saying here? Well, I can't say it. I want to say it. I don't want to say it. You don't even know what love is. There is Genus refers to the body. 
So we're saying body parts that are related to sex, right? So sexual body parts, erogenous zones. Um, so this is an area of the body that when stimulated, right, um, causes a sexual response, right? Causes the organism to um, increase their desire to have sex. Why not? All right, 10 minutes late. Sure, take more time off of that. Um, sorry, she'll make up those hours next year. Uh, all right, so what are, what are our erogenous zones? What's up? So you'll make up those hours next year. All right, so obviously the penis and vagina, right? We know that those are stimulated and create a sexual response. Are there other areas of the body? That is the penis, yes. <laughs> Very nice. Right, so. Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. Right, so, yes, just like uh, Diamond just mentioned, right? So the areola and nipples are areas that are erogenous. Um, right, so when nipples are uh, touched in the right way, right, it creates a sexual desire in the person. Um, and often the question people ask about nipples is what? What is a lot of things kids wonder about? Why do they get hard? All right, so one thing, why do they get hard, right? So, like, Nipples, being an erogenous zone, have a lot of nerve cells. What's our fancy high school bio name for nerve cells? Like nipples? Neurons. They have a what lot of neurons. neurons. <laughs> um, right, so they have a lot of neurons. So when they're touched, right, they react very strongly due to the high density of neurons. Um, also, um, which which sex in our species has an actual purpose for nipples? Um, females, because what happens there? Well, wait, um, Lactating females, right, excrete milk from their nipples. Wait, I've seen a fat boy. Nipples get milk. But <laughs> I have nipples. Can oh my god. So why? Because that's the part, that's the eyes of my body. So when uh, so Mr. Trinidad taught you about um, reproduction, and when we first start off as a zygote, how do we all start off? That's an egg. Egg, egg. That's an embryo. And eggs are what kind of reproductive structure? Who oh, makes them? Oh, yeah, Ladies, right? So we all start off, right? We all start off initially as female. Yeah. And then then males develop based on some genetic differences. Right? So initially we all start off as female, so we have all the same parts. Right? For for a male, right, the no, no, ovaries not. become Testicles, right? And the clitoris becomes the. Anybody? Remember Miss Kateri's class? The penis, right? Right. So, uh, so the testicles are just the ovaries that have been modified, just like the penis is just a modified clitoris. Um, we have one more thing we gotta write about this. This is a flashback chapter two. Um. Do folks remember what do we call a structure that an organism have just because its ancestors had it? It doesn't serve them any purpose, right? So for instance, we have an appendix, and whales still have hip bones, even though they don't have legs. Does anyone remember the name of that? I'll put the first couple letters and see if folks can remember. What do we call that structure that we have? Vesicles. Vesicles. Vestibular, right? So vestigial. Right, so that's a vestigial structure. It's one that the organism is not using, but it's there because the ancestor, oh, ancestors sorry. had it. All right, great. Um, so of course, the um, glutes or the buttocks are also structures that um, are erogenous zones. And just kind of think about why that is. What position do most animals mate in? Oh, from the back. Doggy style. Right, the right so the male's, pubis, the male's pelvis is up against the glutes of the female. Right, so that is an area that when stimulated, it triggers an erogenous response in the brain. Right, because of that positioning that most animals do. Yes. Um, we're saying, because we're saying plural. Oh. Yes. How about 69? Um, right, so um, we're gonna, we'll be seeing other animals that use that position, but that's not the most often used. Do you know that? Are we watching videos today? Um, no, on Friday. Alright, so the lips are also erogenous zones. Right? And of course, we're acting, expecting you to act like a young gentleman. We don't know screeching and squealing going on, right? So you have a little self control all the time in the conversation. Um, right, so why? So in movies or maybe even your own home, 
why is it a parent or a guardian wouldn't want their child to be, um, you know, in a, behind a closed door with a, with a potential sexual partner and kissing? Because that can lead to having... It can lead to sex, right? The yeah. lips, being erogenous zones, when kissing starts, does it increase or decrease the sexual desire? It increases, it increases right? So the kissing is, can be a gateway to saying yes to other things, right? They start with a little kissing, and that's kind of nice. They start a little petting, and that feels kind of nice. And before you know that, it comes off. Right? Right, so, and then, of course, the vagina and the penis are also erogenous zones, right? Areas that, if they're touched, um, they get wet or hard. They, right, they um, have a response, right? So, so we're looking at these things as being areas that, if they're touched on your body, you are more likely to engage in intercourse afterwards. All right, so now females and males have different reproductive strategies. And before we write anything, I'm going to block the words here. Um, we're looking at how males and females use either or of one of these things. So we have quality, how good the partner is, versus quantity, how many partners you're likely to have. Which, which biological sex tends to deviate towards either strategy? I'm purposely blocking that energy now. Why? Because I want, you, I want to make a guess before we uh, Wait, move on. Can you repeat Wait, the question? Right, so who's more likely to go for which strategy? Um, for the strategy of having really high quality partners versus having as many partners as possible. Um, oh, oh, one, the the is the All right, so it's pretty Wait. well understood. Um, um, right, so it's pretty well understood that in many animal species, males tend to try to have as many partners as possible, while females try to have the best partner possible. Oh, and let's have a conversation around why that is. Why is there this contrast in reproductive strategies? So, right, why, why is it often that in animal species, males tend to have multiple short-term mates, whereas females will try to look for a really high-quality, satisfying, long-term situation? Yes, Mr. Shields. Because that's the big daddy. You just they don't want to lose them, you know? That's the why is that? Well, why would the female want to choose a male who's not just going to have sex with her and then leave? That's Excellent, right? Is is raising offspring easy? No. No, right? You need the male's help. And if you choose a male that doesn't behave well, you're not going to have help raising your baby. Right? So females tend to look for high quality mates. Males that have things they can offer to help with the offspring. Um, now for males, they don't have this problem, right? They're not going to have to become pregnant. They're not going to have to raise the offspring afterwards. So they're more likely to try to wander away and find other mates. Um, Right, so, so there's a, a little bit of a struggle here, right, between ma the male and female sex. And trying to, females trying to balance out only finding males that will stick around, um, versus males who are trying to acquire more partners. Mr. Capital, what happens if you're born as a mistake? That's um, possible. Then you're yeah. still born, yeah, yeah, um, right? Yeah, when your mother, being a dog, I mean, she goes and puts them in the clothing, you being <laughs> And that goes to, and, and Jesus, that goes to this, right? So, did, did, did she make a quality choice? Yes. Um, no. Yes, because she came in pajamas to the party. No, so, right, and did that, did that lead to her better happiness and success? Um, yeah, because my dad was drunk. Right, so, and was that a benefit to her as a mother? So, in what ways? I wasn't born yet. I was a mistake. Correct. So, was your mother making a great choice? <laughs> what so was, your making, was your mother making a high quality choice? Uh, yes. So she no. chose a partner who was successful to help her out with raising their offspring. Yes. Um, he raised me. You know, he's dead. Excellent. So at this point, so at that time she did make a good choice, and that's terrific. Is that usually the case? No. Right. So, so we're thinking about here. So sometimes, statistically speaking, it works out. But does that always work out? No, that doesn't always work out, right? Okay. Um, Alright, so they're having a competition here, and the winner will have the 
right? Be more likely to um, have the female athlete, right? Oh, yeah. So that, that's what we're talking about male strategies. Right? We talked yesterday about how this simple represents that Mr. Shields did not want all the blinds down. If the room gets too dark, okay, you'll fall asleep immediately. It's fine as it is. Other areas, welcome to see. You're welcome to move up here, Mr. Shields, but please, I, I just said do not close the blinds. I'm going to come back and open it back up. All right. Like our bunnies here, right? So, um, so we've got our rabbits down there. 
And um, the winner of this challenge will, of course, the video keeps repeating have itself. the opportunity to uh, mate, right? Have the opportunity to mate, right? So males will engage in competitions. Oh, you got enough. Right? Males will go during competitions that show that they can maintain their territory. That's like those boxes, you know, will be like this. Right? And let's say let's see, the male that wins drives the other one off. Right. Uh, it's very exciting, the bunny battle. Let's move back to the academics now. Um, right, so the male that wins gets to keep all this area, which also means what can you provide now? Food and shelter. Food and shelter, right? So for humans, um, we also, of course, engage in competitions. Are athletes considered more or less attractive by females? More. More, more attractive. Sexy. If you are a freshman in high school and you come to this school, what is something many of the freshmen um, try to become part of? Mm. Money the basketball team, right? If you get on the team, now you're out there on the court, you can show off how strong and smart you are, and you are more likely to attract mates, right? So males use their resources, intelligence, and their physical strength to show to females they are worth mating with. Right, and we call that, and David used the key word there earlier. This is an indicator of being fit or having fitness. Right, this is all about showing you are mentally and physically fit. I'm paying the rent out of the male rabbit Right, so the male rabbit's job, right, is he's going to provide a shelter and then protect the female from predators, right, as well as other males. So that's his form of paying the rent, right? Huh? They're practicing how to play. Well, no, th these two males are having a battle for territory, right? So you can expect that there are females watching. The wi the loser will run off, and the male will keep the females. So she's recording. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the, obviously, she's recording. Right? Um, <laughs> all right, so, so then we talk about male strategies. Let's talk about female strategies. All right, so down here we see two, a male and a female bird. Um, so albatross, this particular bird, these are birds that mate for life. They generally live lifespans of 50 years. Once they have a sexual partner, they stay with that partner usually for between the 30 and 50 years. Um, what they do routinely is these little dances to reestablish their emotional bond, right? To prove they still care about each other. Um, do humans do this as well? Do, couple, do humans and couples have little rituals, like little things they say to each other and they go to their favorite yeah. restaurant, yeah? Right, so we also have these rituals to establish that. So let's talk about yeah. female strategies now. So, so <laughs> All right, so um, females use a thing known as sexual selection. What is it to select something? Select for To pick it, to choose it, right? To say that this thing is better than the other. Right, so in sexual selection, we have a form of natural selection here. Um, we are females looking at a male's characteristics and deciding whether or not he is desirable for mating. Is he smart enough? Does he have enough resources? Will he stick around and help me raise the offspring? Yo, Ms. Scott, I have a question. Hmm. So you know how some men, they, they cheat on their on they wives, right. fuck boys? Can animals do the same thing? Absolutely, right? We were talking about quality versus quantity before. So let's talk about dogs. Like, they cheat on their dogs. Like, so in, in all in all animal groups, right? So the females are trying to find the best mate and the males are trying to find the m most mates they can, right? Because again, the female, if, if she has sex, what's the likely outcome? She's got to raise the baby. It's very difficult. She's got to be picky. But does the male have that problem? No. The, the, the worst thing that will happen to him is he might get a sexually transmitted infection. Miss him. Miss him. Okay. You remember yesterday how we were talking about Is there different species? But what if a horse have have a, uh, have sex with like a dog or something? Same thing, right? They're different species. They're they're sperm and eggs can't. Yo, mix. Felicity, let's try that. This is like the whole purpose of chapter three. <laughs> I mean, let's kid up a horse and a dog. <laughs> Save your your science research discussions for some. Um, oh, wait, that's a science research project. Right. So, yeah. um, so again, sexual selection. The females looking for a male that has intellect, has strength, and has resources. Right. It's an indicator of his. What's the special word?
over there and get her on his. We really don't need all the child like squealing and screaming constantly, right? High school? Um, what is the word that sums all these up? It's a, if the male has all those things, he's very what? Smart. Has a high level of fitness, right? She's looking for males that are fit, have fitness. Um, all right, so, all right, now, because of the tremendous difficulty of raising children, um, a female's body has a way of tricking her into getting, um, wanting to have sex, right? Because as an animal, she's not going to want to have to take on this burden. So what happens is a lot of female animals go into what's known as estrus. Um, what is that hormone that, um, estrogen, right? Meaning the Latin word. Estrogen. So estro, the Latin word for um, feminine, right? So this is a periodic state of sexual excitement. Just before a menstrual cycle, when fertilization is likely to occur, what do we call this phase? Ms. Kachirian talked about this. When the egg is being released from the ovary? Pregnancy. It's before menstruation. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Um, Good afternoon. This announcement is for all the girls that are on the basketball yeah. team. Um, I need you to all please come to the main foyer. All girls that are on the basketball team, please come to the main foyer. Miss Lee, you put that in the apologize to the teachers for any stuttering. Okay, talk about um, it. On the computer? <laughs> stuttering is an effect of the brain, right? Whether it's out of your mouth or off of your fingers. Um, oh, why do people stutter? I actually don't know. I know it has something to do with the, the neuron like firing a second time, like twice in succession. Um, all right, so, um, so what do we call that when an egg is being released from the ovary of the fallopian tube? Ovulation, um, right? So females, females are more likely to be convinced to have sex during ovulation. Why is that? What are they? What's very likely to happen? That's when you get pregnant. That's when they're most likely to get pregnant, right? So nature has a way of making them more receptive. Why do I look like some of All right, so let's have a little look at something here. A video? All right, so. Who is that? Miss Cover, that's you. <laughs> oh, good. Error has occurred. Let's try it. Yo, uh, all I heard was video and video. Quick video. Like, I've seen, no, I've seen that. Alright, I had a little, little internet slowness as usual. I've seen that in 6th grade. It was on, I was on a little website. Oh, yeah, that's good, man. What? Definitely not the time for that, of course. Yeah, yeah. What? That's the next one. Alright, so, obviously, what am I looking at here? Uh, uh, me. How do you know it's a male? Because he's a short hair. It's a man. What are some of the features that identify this person? The the All right, so people are saying the jaw structure, the cheekbones, right? They're very angular. Um, what about this area? Is there anything that seems particularly male-like about that? What the eyebrows? Eyebrows? Thank you. What, the thicker eyebrows? What about the shape of the eyes? Chinese. More, they're more narrow, right? All right, so what we're gonna do is this is a male that has a high level of testosterone, right? The hormone that controls male characteristics. So we're going to remove testosterone and add estrogen and see what happens. So continue to look at his features, his jaw, his eyes, his cheeks. Oh my god. Did he even change it? Yeah. Oh, it is. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh from having a lot of testosterone to having a lot of estrogen. How is it we know that this face is a female's face? The lips. All right, the lips are more full. Eyebrows. All right, the eyebrows are slimmer. Eyebrows. What about the eyes themselves? Green. Well, they're wider. They're wider, they're rounder. Um, what about her jawline? It's not All right, great. Now, what they found in research, and we're going to see a clip on this um, coming up in a couple of
couple of days, oh, no. um, is that males of most species tend to choose females that are hyper feminine, right? Mm -hmm. That have characteristics that are definitively female. Let's say, for example, I take this female right now, she's at like 95% estrogen and like 5% testosterone. Let's say I make it more like, um, you know, two, two thirds estrogen, one third testosterone. What do we think of this female now? Like, oh, no. is she as attractive as the other one? No. Mm. No. I mean, is, she, is it still feminine? Like, you still recognize it as a female's face? Mm -hmm. She can still. Yeah, be. right? But, we, all right, now for females, something a little different happens. Generally speaking, females no will choose a male that is about two thirds testosterone and one third um, estrogen. Um, tell me about this male. What do you think? What do you think his behaviors are like? His characteristics? Like looking at this male, does he seem like someone who um, would would be like gentle, caring, and friendly, or aggressive? He's gentle, caring, correct. All right. So he really different things, but all right. Um, so most women tend to, unless they're adolescent or unless they're ovulating, choose this male. But females that are ovulating, females that are ovulating, that's what you just continue to talk over me. I don't mind at all. Wow. You look scary. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll turn him down. Put a little more, a little more feminine. All right. So, all right. So. Let's say, for example, when we go to the hyper-masculine scale, women that are ovulating or adolescent females who have a, a, a higher production of estrogen hormones tend to choose males that are a little more extreme. But when we look at this male, does this seem like a nurturing, kind fellow? No. No. But is this male what most people would consider sexy? Yeah, no. Oh, um, right, so if you if you look at um, athletes, male models, do they tend to have this appearance? No, no, yes. Yeah, right. They do, they often have this very angular face, right, and these deep set eyes, right. So for most women, again, we're not saying all, but for most women, uh, they tend to like a softer male most of the time. That would be nurturing and help take care of the family. But when they're ovulating, when they're very fertile, or when they're adolescent, they tend to choose a male that's a little more testosterone, a little more aggressive. Um, all right, so um, let's finish up. All right, so that concludes the new stuff. Um, so as promised, we're going to spend the rest of class today finishing the posters we started yesterday. So there's the direction. Your materials are right over there. Um, and you have, yeah, as promised, you have about 45 minutes before our exit card. So that will give you plenty of time to uh, finish that work up. Um, for those of you that were out, um, let me know.